It's a world of you too. We are in. Oh damn it! What town are we in? <laughs> Greenfield, Massachusetts. This is the Eunice. If I'm saying that right, Williams, wife of the Reverend John Williams. The redeemed captive was killed at this place on March 1st, 1704, during the Deerfield Massacre. What? Deerfield Massacre, huh? Uh, I believe it's the Queen Anne War that this took place. And I want to literally talk about uh, how this war led to the Indians not wanting to fight no more wars. And I honestly believe that after the last war that the Indians said they would not fight with the French. They are literally, <clears throat> and why they did this, oh, bees, is due to because I think uh, not wanting to fight no more wars is because I believe the French had told the Indians that. They would get their land back for them and literally defeat the English and the British from what they had taken from them. Now due to the French out in the, out where France is, English and British is, out, in the, out <clears throat> across the world there. They were literally getting sick of all the crap. And of course, wars broke out British. And for that, led them to come here and try to take over land. Now the French was trying to get all the land out here in Deer, Deerfield area. And I think honestly due to the fact that the Indians were promised their land, of course the person in charge of the French Indian War led to this murder and this death of this woman, Miss Williams, Mrs. Williams, and just gave birth the day before and they were to take, and I believe she was English. Where she was either English or a British person. And of course she was getting kidnapped and made to be marched to Canada. And a lot of wars with the Indian Wars, for some reason Indians would bring their captives to Canada. Just like the King Philip War, they brought uh, John Fitch and his family to Ontario, Canada. A Fitchburg Mass, and that's why John Fitch is named after but as much as I can say it and as much as I can keep going over and over you know the Indians had these people come into their world and literally take all over this and take it away from them and at this point the Queen Anne's war I think the Indians definitely had enough of it but when they found out they weren't getting nothing back. And I believe the French lost the war anyways. Because of the British Army being too strong. They literally whacked this woman out with a hatchet. And because she couldn't make the trip. It, they got to this point here where she was tired, exhausted from the pregnancy birth. And yeah, they literally had to take her out. Because she couldn't make it. Whoever cannot make the trip to Canada shall be killed and left to where they are. So some say you can see her spirit throughout this area on the bridge due to the fact I believe that, yeah, she 
Of course, like any spirit, probably wanted vengeance. And they also killed her infant here too. But like I say, this is what these are the kinds of stories that brought the people of the world of today to think Indians are savages. But when Indians were told what to do and made what to do and changed their lifestyle to either French, British, or English, they had no choice to do what they were commanded to do. And the lead commander told them to kill this woman. So that's why I'm here today to make sure that, yes, you see this sign that literally says this woman or whatever was killed, but yet you don't see nothing about you know, the French telling, I believe, the Indians that we will fight the English and defeat them. We will defeat the British. We will get your land back. And we will, okay, live happily ever after. Which just was not the case. The France at the time, you know, I would respect France now. We are all united. But back then, of course, everybody was wanting free land and to make their own rules. And that's why things of the Indians was twisted in stories. And that's why I'm here today to straighten them out. So that's what I believe it happened. We will give her a moment of silence. And of course, no one should have savagely died like that. But, like I say, due to the money greed of the land greed of who wanted to control it between the English and the French and because they had more people here now the Indians had no choice to do what they had to do so right the twisted story of the Indians being savages how about the people that came here and were savages to them they had no choice but to live the lifestyle that they were made and forced to do that's why stories like this come about and uh make them look so disgusting, disgraceful. And you know what? It wasn't even them. Just like we're being made, told what to do, to stop saying God bless you, to stop saying the Pledge of Allegiance, to stop harassing the Muslim community because they wear their kerchiefs around their face in a bank or they wear their kerchiefs in a license. Oh, and by the way, don't say Merry Christmas no more. It's happy holidays. You know, this stuff that I was brought up in the constitutional rights is right. Whether it was taken from the Indians and made for the white man, I still believe in. And I think Indians' right have been rightfully given back their lands. <clears throat> for rightfully have been given back their decency and dignity to live. But yet, we're starting to go through what these people went through. 700 years ago. And that's why I'm here to tell them I come to these parts of interest, spots, excuse me, of interest, and make sure my story of my heritage and Native American brothers and sisters be treated and not be looked at as savages no more. Unfortunately, a soul lost her life here. And as I sit and say, Mrs. Williams, sorry for what has happened, but of course, you were born into a time and raised into a time where money, filth, and greed was the only option to live from the hands of my Native American people. I want to make it ease, and I want to set you free of what you had brutally went through and give my fullest, deepest regards and apologies because of what we were made and told what to do, of what we would get back and trade, mind you, due to this senseless war. And I stand here with Chief Sitting Bull's shirt that I picked up yesterday to start bringing on to my journeys. I have a couple Indian head shirts that I uh, am going to start wearing every time I come to these spots. Of course, Indian dwellings, I'm um, for sure. And the Deerfield area is very popular for living of Indians. Throw my right hand up and pay my respects to my clan and tribe of people. 
But that is a story and I am uh, straightening out the twistedness of how it was made. Now I'm going to take some pictures and uh, throw them up later on to pay my respects on that also. Until my next video, be safe, take care, and please try not to let the money greed and delinquence of BS of the government, mind you, as my shirt says, <laughs> trust the government? Sure you can trust the government. That one more time. Sure you can trust the government. Ask an Indian right here. Read it and weep. Ask the Indians what the government's like. That's why I bought, bought this shirt. They'll tell you what the government's like. And it brought it to this. A senseless murder. Just like the government's been hiding a lot of sent drugs and cro crooked things. <laughs> Check out all my videos on that. Corruption. Until then. Out.